This is a series on home automation basics. I've been covering some of the essentials like scenes and modes, automations, voice assistants, and in this one, how to secure your smart home devices. In the last video, I walked through voice assistants and how to use them to make your smart home more accessible. If you haven't seen that one, I'll include links in the description, but you can also jump back to the beginning of the Smart Home for Beginners playlist to see topics like scenes, routines, and geofencing. But as I mentioned, in this video, I'll be jumping into securing your smart home. With each smart home device you add, it's like adding a tiny door into your home for someone to hack open and take advantage of. While I will be giving examples from different systems like SmartThings, Google, Amazon, and others, this is meant to be a platform agnostic view on home automation. These are core concepts and they apply to no matter what system you're using. If you're just getting started, then this is the series to watch. If you're already building out your smart home, then this may still spark some ideas. Before we dive in, take a moment and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the full series and other future videos just like this one. I'm Matt Farrell, welcome to Undecided. It's enticing to save some money and buy a no-name brand for $5 versus the $25 for a brand that you're familiar with. The problem is that each of these devices are little computers running basic operating systems. Not every company takes the time to build out their computer systems with the care and attention they require. So they may be running outdated software that has security vulnerabilities that were never patched, or have default administrator usernames and passwords which make it easy for a hacker to take control of the system and then run amok inside your home's network. Internet of Things manufacturers aren't spending enough time securing what they're building. So it's on us to make sure we're buying reputable devices and taking steps to secure our homes. If you don't think this is a wide problem, then you should check out the HP research study that found 70% of IoT devices were vulnerable to attack. Or watch Ken Monroe's TED Talk, where he talks at length about how easy it is to hack a lot of smart tech. Twitter suffered a denial of service attack in October of 2016 that was run from 300,000 hacked home security cameras. This isn't a problem that's going away on its own. Here's a few rules I strongly recommend that you follow. Don't buy IoT devices from a vendor unless it has proven security. The old saying that, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is, is sometimes the case. Don't jump on the cheapest options you find without doing a little research first. Look up the manufacturer to see if there are any customer complaints or issues reported with software problems. See how long they've been in business and what their track record is for pushing updates to their products. Have they been in business for multiple years or are they brand new? Reputable companies will have details on their terms of service and privacy policies. So you can often find out where the servers are located and what countries and laws will be protecting your privacy. It's important to know as much about the company before you plug in any company's device in your home. Put your devices onto a separate network. Try your best to limit the number of devices you put onto your home Wi-Fi network. On a practical level, too many devices on a Wi-Fi network can end up causing instability in your network. A rule of thumb is to not to go over about 50 devices on a single consumer grade router. There are some that can handle more, but it's generally not a good idea. Every device that you add to your network can see every other device on your home network. So one path to secure things would be to get a separate Wi-Fi router that you can run as a secondary network isolated from your main system. Put all of your home computers, smartphones, and other things onto the main Wi-Fi network and then put all of your IoT devices on the second Wi-Fi router running a completely separate gateway. This will make it impossible for any IoT device to see your home PC, Mac, or smartphone. Another option that many routers include is a guest network. For instance, I use the Eero Mesh Wi-Fi system for my home network. I can run a completely separate guest network which isolates anything on that Wi-Fi network from seeing not only my main Wi-Fi devices, but from seeing any other devices on the guest network itself. It's like putting a tiny firewall around every single device on the guest network. And for Apple users, Apple announced a new secure Wi-Fi setup as part of Apple HomeKit. It's basically Eero's guest Wi-Fi technique brought to HomeKit. Any supported HomeKit router will be able to automatically firewall off HomeKit accessories so they can't access your full home network. Linksys, Eero, and Spectrum are the first companies signed on to support that new feature. Make sure your devices are running the latest software. Many devices have firmware updates that come out from time to time to fix bugs, add new features, and to plug security holes. My Philips Hue Hub has received numerous updates over the years. 
but you often have to keep an eye out in that device's mobile app for those updates. I'll often see a notification icon on my Hue app that there's an update to apply. Be sure to check your Hue app or iHome app or fill in the blank app from time to time to see if there are any software or firmware updates available. So that's the last of this initial set of videos, but keep an eye on this playlist and the channel because I'll be adding to it over time. Be sure to drop any questions or aspects to smart homes that you'd like to see me cover in the comments. You can also reach out to me on Twitter, Instagram, and my website. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends because it really does help the channel. There are some other ways that you can support the channel too. Check out my SFSF shop for some cool Tesla, SpaceX, Science, and Undecided t-shirts. There's also other links in the description for some great gear and discounts. And as always, an extra big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Your support is really helping to make these videos possible. Be sure to check out my Patreon page for additional details about joining the crew. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to get alerts when I post new videos. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.